today on an all-new Maryland Dennis Show. It's our real estate reality check. Whether you're buying or selling, we've got insider information and professional advice from the dynamic duo of real estate. The Property Brothers help a conflicted family on whether they should stay or move out of their home. Then, be the envy of your neighborhood with our easy and affordable landscaping tips that'll add a wow factor to your home's curb appeal. Plus, how a home inspection can save you money. The insider secrets you need to know before you put your house up for sale. And now, here she is, Marilyn Dennis. Hello, real estate. Go, oh, yeah. It's going to be a good show. Hi, everybody. Welcome. Okay, this is going to be really good. Today, we're going to have a seat, really do. But in seconds, you'll be standing up again. I, I guarantee it. Today, we're going to give you a real estate reality check. So do you know that 22% of Canadians are willing to enter into a bidding war? I had no idea. And more than half are willing to pay over the asking price to get the property they want. Really? Okay, well, good news if you're selling, bad news if you're buying, that's for sure. Here to give us the straight goods on what's going on in the world of real estate, the dynamic duel of real estate, the Property Brothers. Please welcome Drew and Jonathan Scott. We traveled far because we just got back at midnight from uh, Mexico and we brought you some authentic Mexican tequila because well, we know you like part. This I say is we a... all do shots right now and get this reality check. This will be a big party. <laughs> boy, oh boy. Thank you so much. That's so no. nice of you. You would never okay. think we just came from Cancun, though. No, would you? I know. We're, what are no you can. doing? Like, what happened? Like, I stayed no inside? Sign? You did? No, I'm joking. No, I, just, 60 P uh, I take care of my skin. I want to look good when I'm 80. <laughs> because I'm 75 right now. I only have five years to go. <laughs> okay, you both look great. Okay, so this is what I'm going to talk to you about. Uh, you guys are Canadian, of course. You work a lot in the United States. So tell me, what, what's the deal happening in the economy as far as housing is concerned? I mean, yeah, yeah, there's still a lot of volatility. And yeah. so whenever yeah. we're dealing with clients, we say, you know, people are still really excited to talk about real estate. They want to get into real sure. estate. But this is not really an economy for flipping right now. Uh, the margins are so tight uh, that we say, if you're looking to get into real estate, maybe consider, uh, worst case scenario, hold on to the property for at least three to five years. Because, you are know, you, you talking here? Everywhere. Or everywhere. Everywhere. There, there's so it's opportunity different. all over. No, yeah, but in yeah. Canada, too. I mean, you can make money with flip. Uh, in, yeah, in fact, yeah. we just did a couple of properties in Vancouver uh, area that were flips. Yeah. However, we know what we're doing. A lot of people think they can get into this sort of a game, make some money. They've never done it before, and they end up spending too much, and they can't recover. Or they calculate best-case scenario, and that's not a that's good thing to great. do. You need to take the emotion out of it and go by the numbers. And again, you can make money in any market, up, down, any country, but you really need to know what you're doing. You, you, you do. Okay, let's talk about people with starter homes. Okay, is that possible? Uh, can they make money on you know doing that? Like, can they? Oh yeah, yeah. you can you can make money again on any kind of property, yeah. but you have to know what you're getting into. We mm -hmm. find two big mistakes that people uh, fall into when they're getting their starter homes. Is one they either spend too much, they really want to you know start in the real estate game with a big bang, or they end up trying to compromise in areas that they shouldn't. For example, a lot of times I see people that want to get a bigger home, yes. and so they compromise on the location where they'll get. For example, I have one client that wanted to get this house with a train track right in behind, literally right behind their back fence. Well, that's great that you're getting more house. However, when you turn around to sell that property, most people are not going to want that house. And so now you're really restricting what you're going to get. It's simple mm. economics. It's all supply and demand. And if you eliminate 90% of the buyers that are looking at a property because they don't want to live on a train track, you're not going to get the top dollar in that community. That's in fact, right. you're going to have to make a concession. Yeah. And then as far as buying the home, yeah, people, it, that's why it's called a starter home. Don't expect that you're going to get your forever big home the very first time. If you want to get in the real estate game, feel it out a little bit. Play it smart. Do not put a down payment on a credit card. I don't know how many people I've talked to is in this it, economy. Is that one of the first mistakes people make when oh, they're doing we that? We see it all the time. Really? They think I can put a TV on my credit card. Why not put a down payment on the house? Yeah. Okay. Or even a massive renovation. I, people will come to me and they'll say, I want to do a $200,000 renovation. Wow. I've got this on a line of credit. I've got this on a credit card. And we need to learn from our mistakes because sure. it was over leveraging that caused a lot of the problems in right. 2008 yeah. and that now people because interest rates are so low people keep getting credit wherever they can possibly get it and it's not going to last yeah. forever the rates are going to go up they and it, really are and yeah. if you qualify for a certain amount say for example 400,000 go look at houses that are 350 you don't have to max out what you qualify for and that also mm -hmm. gives you a little it gives you breathe room but it mm -hmm. also gives you a little chance to renovate if you want to do some addition but or you're, additional but, work but you're in, you're in a house and you do want to go up the property ladder you really do do that and I, 
I, it's, it's so stupid when people go beyond their means. But there's got to be some other things, too. Like, I, I would have to say, we watch your show. We go, if they could do it, I could do it. <laughs> That's one thing, because that, that, it, it, you make it look so well, easy. Well, Drew can do it. A monkey could do it. But, <laughs> it's not, yeah, yeah, but you know yeah. what I mean? That's a smart monkey. <laughs> yeah. But you know what I mean? That they feel that they can do it. And the other thing is, they get emotionally attached. Mm -hmm. And that's something you got to step back a little bit and exactly. think about it. Exactly. That's the hardest thing to try and uh, educate buyers or sellers on the fact that they need to take the emotions out of it. This is a business transaction. This is an investment. And uh, honestly, that's what a realtor is here for. That's what a contractor is here right, for. We right. help make those business de decisions that our clients can. And, and the more professionals you involve in the decision-making process, you know, the, the easier it is. And you should never completely rely on your realtor, your home inspector, your contractor. Mm -hmm. uh, but use that knowledge. Get out there and find out in your community what, you know, some common prices are for things they're selling. What are some common Research. issues when they're looking exactly. to sell? Mm -hmm. Education is key. Research is key. A lot of buyers, though, they'll look at a market and they'll see all these houses are listed for $500,000. That's what I can pay for these. Yeah. Well, no, they can list for whatever they want. It's what's selling in the community that you need to know. Huh? Those are the numbers that then you can do a comparable to know what your home is worth or what you should. And, and you don't pay even know because if someone sells a home for you know say nine hundred thousand dollars and an identical one just sold for eight fifty, what's the difference of fifty thousand? Right. You can include a boat or a vehicle. You can include all these things that you would never think you can include in a sale price, and that will show up on the MLS. So you need to go into those listings with a professional and find out why it sold for more. You can't just look at the numbers on paper and say, okay, yeah, now right. I know You can't look at worth. two comparable scenarios. You need to see a lot more than that. You need All to right. see what everything's going So on. when you say, do your homework, give me three pointers. All right. First do of your all, own. it's at the kitchen table. Your mom is overlooking you. You have a peanut butter sandwich. Oh, no, that was in high school. <laughs> yeah. uh, no, but actually, at the kitchen table is the first pointer we say. Yeah. If you're not sitting down with your real estate professional, before you even look at homes and going over your, your budget, your income, if anything's going to change in your income situation, because right now, hey, I qualify at the bank for $80,000. Sure. And people do this all the time. I quickly want to get approved because my income is going to drop in, in two weeks, and I don't want them to approve me for less. Ah. If your income is dropping to $60,000 and it's going to stay that way, or maybe you're having a child that's going to change your cost of living, For sure, uh, you need to make those decisions now so Disclosure. that you don't go yeah. broke. Yeah. And also, you need to have your, your list of must-haves. Again, this is for buyers, whether you're a uh, first-time buyer or you've had several properties, know your must-haves, know the things you need to, uh, for example, uh, if you have three kids, you want a four-bedroom home most likely. Yeah. If you have all those must-haves, the areas that you like, then you can start to look at property. Then we can look at the comparable sold. So there's a whole process, too. And don't, again, don't be afraid, don't feel like you have to rush into real estate ownership because that's when you're going to make mistakes. That's when you're going to pay too much. Uh, don't be afraid to rent. You know, a lot of people actually, uh, they look at, say, you know, you're paying $2,000 a month to rent mm -hmm. in a community right. uh, and they, they really don't want to. Maybe it's a pride thing. They want to have the ownership right now. Well, if your mortgage is 3400 in that same community and 2500 of that is interest, yeah. well, you actually would be better off renting right now until you find the right property. But, you know, you get from our, our friends that have had more life experience, you know, we're talking about our parents, right? They go, you know, that could go towards your mortgage. I don't understand why you're renting. They do always say that, and that's why they we do. talk about the numbers. But th there are several adva advantages, and that's why you do eventually want to get into home ownership because you can take advantage of these. But uh, one of the biggest things is uh, over time, yes, it's a great investment. Yeah. But don't rush into an investment and pay fifty thousand dollars more because you've just you know eaten up that benefit of home ownership for probably mm -hmm. the next decade. Mm -hmm. And you will always find another property. Some people think this is the only one I'm ever going to find. It's the perfect home. There is always it another perfect home. It speaks to me. Yeah. 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 No, that's because it's haunted. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> no, but there is always it's another true. property. Yeah, yeah. So, so just kind of surviving the competitive market, it's really an emotional thing, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It really it is. It, you can sell yourself into anything. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. And uh, that's why you want to work with somebody who understands your situation. Yeah. If you are a first-time buyer, yeah. they're not going to pressure you. You should never feel like you're afraid to ask a question yeah, to your realtor or point. to your contractor. Exactly. Okay. We're here for you. All right. So one of our viewers wrote to us, she desperately wants more space for her family, but they don't know how to move up without breaking the bank, and she's feeling stuck in their starter home. So let's watch her story. Here we go. <laughs> Hi, my name is Josette and I'm a mother of two. We love this house, but we've outgrown it. We outgrew this house after our birth of our first child, Daniel, and we needed to upgrade, but we just haven't had the time and the opportunity to start looking. And then after our second child, we knew that we had to start looking. Kiara, whose bedroom is this? Mommy, Kiara, and Papa. Oh. So as you can see, this is the master bedroom and three of us sleep here. It was okay when she was a baby, but it's now it's time to move on. It's a three bedroom home. 
but it's only two bedrooms upstairs and one bedroom on the main level and we only have a two-piece bathroom upstairs and we have our main bathroom on the main level. So this used to be our dining room. <laughs> but we have a six-year age difference between our children and Daniel has a lot of Lego, so we had to change our dining room into uh, Kiara's toy room. When we bought this house in 2001, I thought initially that at that time it was difficult. People were giving multiple offers. And I thought, okay, we'll build up our equity and uh, assets and everything, and uh, well, it'll be easier the next time they buy a house. And I find that I'm in the same situation that I was in 2001. Like a lot of the homes that are out there right now, even if you get up to one, uh, 1 million or 1.2, they all need a lot of renovations. It seems that maybe it's a little bit more convenient and uh, to uh, knock down the house and uh, to build. But I'm just scared. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, there's your story. Just said this with us in the audience. Thanks for coming in with us today. Hi. How are you doing? I'm good, thank you. Now, my question to you is, do you think the master bedroom on the main floor would be a problem? Um, it do would you... be a problem. Yeah? It's not a problem because my mom stays there when she comes over. Oh, that's good. So it works out, for, well, you know, works out well for her. But it's a problem uh, because we only have two bedrooms upstairs yeah. and we need three. You do need three yeah. up there, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's a beautiful home. Thank you. Looks like a great neighborhood. It's a nice neighborhood. Yeah, and you know, sometimes we're afraid of leaving our homes because the kids yeah. are like enjoying it and that's yeah. what they know and everything. So when you saw the story, what did you guys think? I think the, the first step is apply to Property Brothers and, we, <laughs> and it's set. It is absolutely set. Do you have a price range for your next home? Do you, to, to build or to buy? Well, that's a good question. Which, well, your budget should be your budget. Yeah. So what's, what's your thought? Um, I guess we're looking at homes right now at the moment between 1.3, 1.4. Okay. Yeah. Well, I think, uh, and that, you just said it, that's the decision everyone always has to make the ultimate question is to build or to buy. People want to know, you yeah. know, do I want a home that has a little character, but then am I going to get something that's a little smaller, or do I want something brand new, or sorry, you usually get something a little bit bigger if sure. it's older, uh, or do you want to build something brand new, but that usually costs more money for less house. So uh, these are some of the things that we look at. And with your property, it, is it, is it maybe a, reno a renovation option that you want to add on to it? Well, we can do, if we do a large renovation, then it means the whole, we'd have to leave. And they'd have to take, a, you know, do the whole back and the sure, basement. And sure. so that's kind of almost doing like a build. Okay, well, you know what we're going to do? We're going to large... look at these options after the break because we've got lots to talk about. I love when you said your budget is your budget. Yeah. Okay, so Jonathan and Drew are going to help Josette right after this, okay? All right. Thank you. Coming up, the Property Brothers help one suburban couple find the perfect home. But can they stay within their budget? Another True. property. Yeah, yeah. So, so just kind of surviving the competitive market, it's really an emotional thing, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It really it is. It, you can sell yourself into anything. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. And that's why you want to work with somebody who understands your situation. Yeah. If you are a first-time buyer, yeah. they're not going to pressure you. You should never feel like you're afraid to ask a question yeah, to your realtor or point. to your contractor. Exactly. Okay. We're here for you. All right. So one of our viewers wrote to us, she desperately wants more space for her family, but they don't know how to move up without breaking the bank, and she's feeling stuck in their starter home. So let's watch her story. Here we go. Hi, my name is Josette, and I'm a mother of two. We love this house, but we've outgrown it. We uh, outgrew this house after our birth of our first child, Daniel, and we needed to uh, upgrade, but we just haven't had the uh, time and the opportunity to uh, start looking. And then after our second child, we knew that we had to start looking. Kiara's, what bedroom is this? Mommy, Kiara, and Papa. Oh. So as you can see, this is the master bedroom, and three of us sleep here. It was okay when she was a baby, but it's now it's time to move on. It's a three-bedroom home, but it's only two bedrooms upstairs and one bedroom on the main level. And we only have a two-piece bathroom upstairs, and we have our main bathroom on the main level. So this used to be our dining room. <laughs> But we have a six-year age difference between our children, and Daniel has a lot of Lego, so we had to change our dining room into uh, Kiara's toy room. When we bought this house in 2001, I thought initially that at that time it was difficult. People were giving multiple offers. And I thought, okay, we'll build up our equity and uh, assets and everything, and uh, well, it'll be easier the next time they buy a house. And I find that I'm in the same situation that I was in 2001. 
A lot of the homes that are out there right now, even if you get up to one, uh, 1 million or 1.2, they all need a lot of renovations. It seems that maybe it's a little bit more convenient and uh, to uh, knock down the house and uh, to build. But I'm just scared. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, there's the story. So, so this is first in the audience. Thanks for coming in with us today. Hi. How are you doing? I'm good, thank you. Now, my question to you is, do you think the master bedroom on the main floor would be a problem? Um, it do would be a problem. Yeah? It's not a problem because my mom stays there when she comes over. Oh, that's good. So it works out, for, well, you know, works out well for her. But it's a problem uh, because we only have two bedrooms upstairs yeah. and we need three. You do need three yeah. up there, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's a beautiful home. Thank you. Looks like a great neighborhood. It's a nice neighborhood. Yeah, and you know, sometimes we're afraid of leaving our homes because the kids yeah. are like enjoying it and that's yeah. what they know and everything. So when you saw the story, what did you guys think? I think the, the first step is apply to Property Brothers and, we, <laughs> and it's set. It is absolutely set. Do you have a price range for your next home? Do you, to, to build or to buy? Well, get emotionally attached mm -hmm. and that's something you got to step back a little bit and exactly. think about it. Exactly. That's the hardest thing to try and uh, educate buyers or sellers on the fact that they need to take the emotions out of it. This is a business transaction. This is an investment. And uh, honestly, that's what a realtor is here for. That's what a contractor is here right, for. We right. help make those business de decisions that our clients can. And the more professionals you involve in the decision-making process, you know, the, the easier it is. And you should never completely rely on your realtor, your home inspector, your contractor, mm -hmm. uh, but use that knowledge. Get out there and find out in your community what, you know, some common prices are for things that are selling, what are some common Research. issues when they're looking exactly. to sell. Mm -hmm. Education is key. Research is key. A lot of buyers, though, they'll look at a market and they'll see all these houses are listed for $500,000. That's what I can pay for these. Yeah. Well, no. They can list for whatever they want. It's what's selling in the community that you need to know. Huh? Those are the numbers that then you can do a comparable to know what your home is worth or what you should and, and you don't even know because if someone sells a home for you know say nine hundred thousand dollars and an identical one just sold for eight fifty what's the difference of, of fifty thousand right you can include a boat or a vehicle you can include all these things that you would never think you can include in a sale price and that will show up on the MLS so you need to go into those listings with a professional and find out why it sold for more you can't just look at the numbers on paper and say okay yeah, now right. I know you can't look at worth. two comparables in the area you need to see a lot more than that you need all to right. see what everything's going so through. when you say do your homework. Give me three pointers. All right. First Do of your all, own. it's at the kitchen table. Your mom is overlooking you. You have a peanut butter sandwich. Oh, no, that was in high school. No, <laughs> uh, no but actually, at the kitchen table is the first pointer we say. Yeah. If you're not sitting down with your real estate professional, before you even look at homes and going over your, your budget, your income, if anything's going to change in your income situation, because right now, hey, I qualify at the bank for $80,000. Sure. And people do this all the time. I quickly want to get approved because my income's going to drop in, in two weeks, and I don't want them to approve me for less. Ah. If your income is dropping to $60,000 and it's going to stay that way or maybe you're having a child that's going to change your cost of living for sure uh, you need to make those decisions now so that you don't go yeah. broke yeah. and also you need to have your your list of must-haves again this is for buyers whether you're a uh, first-time buyer or you've had several properties know your must-haves know the things you need to uh, for example uh, if you have three kids you want a four-bedroom home most likely yeah. if you have all those must-haves the areas that you like then you can start to look at property then we can look at the comparable sold so there's a whole process too and don't, again, don't be afraid don't feel like you have to rush into real estate ownership because that's when you're going to make mistakes that's when you're going to pay too much uh, don't be afraid to rent you know a lot of people actually uh, they look at say you know you're paying two thousand dollars a month to rent mm -hmm. in a community right. uh, and they, they really don't want to maybe it's a pride thing they want to have the ownership right now well if your mortgage is thirty four hundred in that same community and twenty five hundred of that is interest yeah. well you actually would be better off renting right now until you find the right property but you know you get from our, our friends that have a more life experience you know we're talking about our parents right they go you know, that could go towards your mortgage. I don't understand why you're renting. They do always say that, and that's why they we do. talk about the numbers. But th there are several advantages. Your home's curb appeal, plus how a home inspection can save you money. The insider secrets you need to know before you put your house up for sale. And now, here she is, Marilyn Dennis. Hello, real estate. Go, oh, yeah. It's going to be a good show. Hi, everybody. Welcome. Okay. This is going to be really good. Today we're going to have a seat, really do. But in seconds you'll be standing up again, I, I guarantee it. Today we're going to give you a real estate reality check. So do you know that 22% of Canadians are willing to enter into a bidding war? I had no idea. And more than half are willing to pay over the asking price to get the property they want. 
Really? Okay, well, good news if you're selling, bad news if you're buying, that's for sure. Here to give us the straight goods on what's going on in the world of real estate, the dynamic jewel of real estate, the Property Brothers. Please welcome Drew and Jonathan Scott. We us. traveled far because we just got back at midnight from uh, Mexico and we brought you some authentic Mexican tequila because well, we know you like part. This I say is we all do shots right now and get this reality show. This will be a big party. <laughs> boy, oh boy. Thank you so much. It's so nice of you. You would never okay. think we just came from Cancun, though. Would no, you? I know. What are no we can. doing? Like, what happened? Like, I stayed no sign? inside. You did? No, I'm joking. No, I, just, 60 P I take care clock? of my skin. I want to look good when I'm 80. <laughs> because I'm 75 right now. I only have five years to go. <laughs> okay, you both look great. Okay, so this is what I'm going to talk to you about. Uh, you guys are Canadian, of course. You work a lot in the United States. So tell me, what, what's the deal happening in the economy as far as housing is concerned? I mean, yeah, yeah, there's still a lot of volatility. And yeah. so whenever yeah. we're dealing with clients, we say, you know, people are still really excited to talk about real estate. They want to get into real sure. estate. But this is not really an economy for flipping right now. Uh, the margins are so tight uh, that we say, if you're looking to get into real estate, maybe consider, uh, worst case scenario, holding on to the property for at least three to five years. Because, you are know, you, you talking here? Everywhere. Or everywhere. Right. There, there's so it's opportunity no difference. all over. No, yeah. But in yeah. Canada, too, I mean, you can make money with flip. Uh, in, yeah. in fact, yeah. we just did a couple of properties in Vancouver uh, area that were flipped. Yeah. However, we know what we're doing. A lot of people think they can get into this sort of a game, make some money. They've never done it before, and they end up spending too much, and they can't recover. Or they calculate best-case scenario, and that's not a that's good thing to great. do. You need to take the emotion out of it and go by the numbers. And, again, you can make money in any market, up, down, any country, but you really need to know what you're doing. You, you, you do. Okay, let's talk about people with starter homes. Okay, is that possible? Uh, can they make money on you know doing that? Like, can they? Oh yeah, yeah. You, can, you can make money again on any kind of property, yeah. but you have to know what you're getting into. We mm -hmm. find two big mistakes that people uh, fall into when they're getting their starter homes. Is one, they either spend too much, they really want to you know start in the real estate game with a big bang, or they 